Hello there and welcome back. Um, previously I was working on the car dismantling the engine and the reason I had to stop filming was because the batteries went flat. But I continued the work regardlessly and I prepared all the parts which I dismantled here for, for you all to see. And the, basically I encountered many similar problems regarding the turbo intake and fuel system which was pretty much knackered, as you will see here. Uh, so we'll start with the injectors over here. Um, from the AI point, first point of view, as you'll see here, they're pretty much seemingly okay, but you can never judge an injector just by looking at it. But a very, very obvious problem came around here, which this injector is missing a needle, as you can see here. These all have a needle popping out. This one is missing. So I guess we have a problem, an obvious problem with the fuel distribution. And here we have this regulator which distributes the fuel evenly on each rail, here and here, which I'm not sure if it was ever changed or fixed. but. We'll see that later. But the obvious problems are as seen here. So, this is the intake manifold for the V6 system. And the pipes, as you can see here, are rock solid, which is not good. And they are a bit crimped. So, that needs to be changed. And it goes to show about how well the distribution was happening. So here, as we can see, it's all filled with carbon and hard particles as well, which is not a good sign, because the air has to travel through here, and the injector lays somewhere here, and when the air passes through there, it ha uh, the fuel, the air-to-fuel mixture ratio happens in this in this part, and according to the valve timing, so. As you can see, the air is not traveling smoothly here because it's all uh, clogged up with all this, car this carbon. And moreover, this part is the top piece that lays upon the intake, up in here. And this piece, as you see from outside, is the air to fuel ratio sensor. It indicates how much air is going in, so it will vary how much fuel should be distributed. And as you can see, it's all filled with oil and fuel. And that's not a good sign at all, because it's pretty much clogged up. And it needs to be replaced, since it's an electric part, it can be easily fixed, so it's better to be replaced. Um, the plugs, most of them showed sign of lean mixture. I'm not sure if I can get it focused. Uh, some of them were dripping fuel, literally. They were all, were all wet from top to bottom. So I had two of them which were all covered in fuel. Uh, two of them were ex excessively rich in fuel. And, some of, and one of them was a bit lean and the other was in accordance. But that's not good, because you need all six of them to be firing properly. Uh, the pipes, this one goes into, no, goes into the air to fuel mixture, into this one, the red part. And these holes are from the intercoolers, which they take the part of the boost. And as you can see, they're all covered in oil something very weird because it, it was serviced like two weeks ago and it was cl all cleaned up and as you can see it's all filled with oil so something's wrong definitely with the turbos these over here are the leads of the high tension wires which as you can see they're all cracked up so I'm not sure if there was any firing going on inside them because they're all cracked from top to bottom. Since it was firing somehow, I guess 
they were still functioning, some of them. These are the boost pipes. This is the pipe that goes directly out. The turbos, the lower part. These are the upper parts. So, these are the intercoolers. It has two of them. Let me see if I can get some light into them. It looks a bit shady, but it's pretty much covered in oil. As you will see, just by doing so, all of that oil came out from there. But in direct sunlight, you will, it was clear as day. That's, it's all filled with oil. And a very, very, very pr big problem it had, it was overheating constantly. And this is the main reason why. The fins got damaged. Don't know when, don't know how. But even part of this bearing is very loose. And if it t when you try to spin it, you can feel it uh, making that clunking noise. This is the air conditioning fan, which is a lot more smoother compared to it. But it is also a bit worn out. So hopefully I will buy me a new set of two fans with much more fins to them. And let's see. This is the water bottle, which once the engine overheated, no, I guess not once, one too many times. And as you can see, the condition is a bit bloated. <laughs> it was about to pop one too many times, but survived so far. Hopefully I'll find one, a new one, and I'll re replace it. And this one is the water distribution unit. As you can see, it's not in great conditions. But it's not in very bad ones neither. So let's see here. That thermostat is a bit new for now. That's why it's all shiny. The pipes. Look at that. Let's put some light on them. So, let's see. So as we can see here, these pipes are heavily damaged over here. And I don't know why it's not a pipe which is fitted like these over here. One size, they fit like with a reducer. Maybe it was homemade. Don't know. This pipe was blanked onto the heater of the dashboard. Mainly because it, I guess it popped up a couple of while back. I'm not sure. This car was both used, so I guess a lot has happened to it. The radiator is still in good condition, so it will be just cleaned up, checked out, and refitted. And these are the gaskets to the intake, which, which I do believe someone took them out and re-put the same old ones in. As you can see. They are not placed properly, so they got creases all over, as you can see here. Some of them even got chipped off a bit. Uh, let's see. Can get the focus right. Let's, you can see from here that somewhere here we have leak, uh, evidence of leaks that the manifold wasn't sealing it properly. Thus, there's a lot of bad mixture inside it. If you put fingers through, you can find a lot of carbon residues and a very obvious weird wiring, which is normally found in the earth or ground in uh, household appliances, as in the car, unlike this one is the proper ground to the wiring of a car. The fuel pipes, the water pipes, they are very, very hard or very, very soft, such as this one. This is of the breather with an, of the oil. Fuel pipes, hard as rock. Water pipes also. 
uh, there's pretty much a lot to be replaced a lot to be checked the turbo sits down there I need to take it out and inspect it a bit thoroughly so I can see what is damaged and what is not but the major situation with this car is that a lot of things must be replaced as I mentioned before I will have to take out the whole wiring unit and dismantle it take it apart and rewire it completely and avoiding these kind of wires even though they might still do the job because they are multi-strand instead of single core it's preferably to use proper auto wires for the sake of the color coding so I will use uh, color for live, a color for ground and signal wires would have each an independent color so as not to be confused also I will draw the schematic for anyone who would like to understand afterwards any kind of problem that may occur I would find it easy to understand where the wire goes to and which wire is of which so for now that's just about it I will continue by taking out, removing the starter from here um, proceeding to taking out the cover of the uh, timing belt taking out any other secondary belts, I'll keep the timing belt in for now take off the battery because I needed it to open the rear door now that's all fixed, I can take it off and then start by taking out the top head cover and see what's wrong with the heads because with this head there was some strange noise some clunking noise coming out of it um, yes and that's just about it for now and then I will be moving on with slowly slowly taking the head apart and then taking the other head out pulleys and checking out the bores because this is a wet type engine so it's all about pulling out the sleeve, uh, pulling out pistons with the sleeve, whereas piston first and sleeve after, which that was the best way to go about it. As I previously said, I was taking, going to take apart the starter and some other parts, like the battery and the covers. Uh, I couldn't quite film it because I still have the batteries of the camera still on charge, so bear with me for now until the recharging is full so here as you can see we have a small problem because the starter let me check focus here is a bit bitten off and I don't know actually how it happened so we'll see how bad the situation is I'll check the gears on the starter as well uh, let's see how strong the starter still is otherwise it's off to the scrappy for that and the new one will follow uh, the cover for the timing belt is a bit knackered as well let's see if I can fix it or maybe it's cheaper to buy another one here we can see everything is exposed now that is where the starter was placed and now we have everything exposed in regards to the timing belt, the water pump, the tensioner, the conditioning pulley, power steering pulley, the main crank pulley, that's where the oil filter used to be, and the alternator. I will ta be taking these apart and then slowly moving up to here and taking up the top cover of the cylinder head and inspecting all the rest of this area so until then I have to turn off the camera off again so to save the battery I have left until the other ones be I'll be fully recharged so that's about it for now thanks again for watching and ciao for now